Hi, this is Ralph Moss with a video blog. I wanted to talk to you today about the drug Avastin, or Bevacizumab, to give it the scientific name. This is one of the top-selling drugs in the world. Sales in 2010 topped $6.9 billion, billion with a B. And so uh, it's really been a, an item of tremendous interest in the field of oncology. You may have heard that the FDA removed its approval of Avastin for advanced breast cancer earlier in 2011. Now the, uh, the company Genentech is gearing up to seek approval for the drug for ovarian cancer. And I wanted to look at the studies that uh, support this use and see what they actually show, contrary to what some of the reports that I've heard in the media and you've probably heard as well. Um, there were two studies published in December of 2011 in the New England Journal of Medicine, and one of them showed a progression-free survival gain of 3.8 months. Um, the, I'll talk about progression-free survival in a moment. In the second trial, the European trial, patients received less of AS than half the dose as in the American trial, and the gain in uh, progression-free survival was just 1.7 months. Then they took that data and they did what's called an unplanned subset analysis. In other words, they went looking in the overall not very positive picture for some subcategories that might show greater benefit. And what they showed was that in people who had a high risk kind of ovarian cancer, uh, there actually was a greater gain of uh, oh, in, in both progression-free and in overall survival of 7.8 months. So this did seem to indicate, at least at first sight, that a smaller dose of Avastin, 7.5 milligrams per kilogram, given for up to seven months, seemed to extend the life of high-risk ovarian cancer patients. It's a rather important finding. But we have to bear in mind that this is a subgroup analysis that wasn't planned in the original study. And there's all kinds of uh, statistical reasons why when you go looking for benefit after you've designed your study, you're liable to, you know, pick and choose, cherry pick, as it were, the data to come up with the results that you want. That's why most statisticians really demand that you specify in advance what you're going to look for. Uh, the other thing about Avastin is it can have very serious side effects, uh, hypertension, which is usually manageable, but also the more serious intestinal perforations. And the cost of Avastin is huge. It's $100,000 or, or roughly per year for patients, and that's about the median net worth of most American families. So this really is a kind of uh, mortgage your house or sell your house type of treatment, and given the relatively small effect that it has in most patients, it seems to be not very much bang for the buck, if you pardon the expression. Um, the best thing would be if we could specify in advance who is likely to respond and who is not, but according to Deborah Armstrong at Johns Hopkins, that's really not possible right now. So a lot of people are being given uh, Avastin for advanced ovarian cancer when uh, many of them won't respond at all. And then there's a subgroup that gets benefit, but that's diluted out by the, um, by the larger unspecified group. I, I believe that a test, tests do exist that will give an indication of whether Avastin is going to work. I talk about that in my latest book, Customized Cancer Treatment. And uh, these are basically chemosensitivity assays. And I think other kinds of tests are coming down the pike now that uh, show similar benefits. So I think interested viewers might want to take a look at my book, Customized Cancer Treatment, that is available on Amazon. In any case, uh, this is why I've been skeptical about Avastin for a long time. Not much benefit. It certainly isn't the drug that, you know, that Judah Folkman's work promised us 10, 15, 20 years ago that it was going to control cancer by this new mechanism of restricting blood, uh, blood vessel growth in tumors. But it has some benefit 
and if we could specify in advance which patients are likely to benefit, then it really could be a useful drug. So for the Moss Reports and for our CancerDecisions.com video blog, this is Ralph Moss.